Hey there, uh, hope you're doing well. My name is Krishna, I run the engineering team at Snowpal. Uh, in this presentation, we're gonna take a look at some of the APIs offered by Snowpal. We are a backend as a service provider and our intent is to do most, if not all, of the backend heavy lifting for you. So you can actually focus on your core customer problems. So whether you're building a web app, mobile app, or server-side app, you can leverage our APIs to reduce your time to market significantly. Here's a list of our APIs in production, and this list is constantly growing. Uh, we have six at this point, Building Blocks API, Content Management API, Project Management API, Conversation API, Classroom API, and Status API. So it doesn't matter what you're trying to solve. Uh, it's likely that one of these APIs or a combination of these APIs are going to hold you in good stead. For instance, you can start with Building Blocks and get a feel for it. Uh, and it's, it is industry agnostic. Uh, and, and business agnostic, right? What I mean by that is uh, whether you're building an app or a web app, mobile app or server set app, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what you're building and it doesn't matter who you're building it for, right? Maybe it's for the restaurant industry, whether it's for the pharmaceutical industry, whether it's for the uh, hotel industry or the project management industry or whatever, uh, you should be able to use, say, the Building Blocks API to get started. Uh, at the same time, we also have business-centric APIs like content management API and project management API, for instance, that are that have more domain uh, specificities, right? So you can check that out if you're building something that's very specific to those areas, or if you're building solutions that also has a content management component or a project management component, even if it's not entirely so. Um, similarly, or along those lines, if let's say you're building an application, you got everything that you need, you've built that in-house, you need a conversation ability, right? You need uh, a feature, you wanna support a feature, where your users can actually chat with each other, like in-app conversations, whether it's on mobile or on the web or anywhere else. For that, you can very simply integrate uh, the conversation API and get you going. Next one is a classroom API. If you're in the ed tech industry, if you're uh, you know catering to the teacher, or the market of uh, professors and teachers and tutors and students, that's gonna be a good place to start because it's got a lot of features around creating classrooms, uh, managing your classes, adding students, collaborating with other teachers, and a plethora of other feet, uh, such items that relate to classrooms, um, assigning, you know, uh, creating custom uh, grading scales, uh, publishing assessments, uh, as, uh, assigning grades and publishing grades to students, comparing student performances within a student and across students and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, the next one, status API, is if you're building, let's say, a Slack application to manage statuses, that's actually a good one to start with. It's got about 70 endpoints. Uh, compared to the other ones that have like uh, over 300, 250, 350 endpoints. Collectively, there's th over 1,300 plus endpoints at this point, and that, list, that number is constantly growing. So that gives you an idea about the breadth of the problems you could potentially solve using our APIs. So get started. Again, like I said, the number is six, and the endpoints are like close to 1,500 or 1,350 or something along those lines at this point. But every time you're going to come revisit, you're going to see that the API count increases and the endpoints also increase because we are solving helping you solve more and more of your problems without you having to spend time, money, and effort and resources on the service side, maintaining, managing, staffing, hiring, and training uh, folks to building these systems for you. Uh, we looked at this briefly. Uh, essentially, you can take, you know, uh, take a deeper look at these slides. Uh, the Building Blocks API has over 350 endpoints, and that is a pretty good starting point for solving generic problems. And we, we uh, talked about it a couple of minutes ago, right? So I'm just going to skip through the next one. Uh, the Content Management API, it's got over 300 endpoints. If you're building content management solutions or solutions that have a need for some variation or sense of content management, then this is going to actually be pretty useful for you. The next one is the Project Management API. Um, so this one has 250 endpoints at this point, uh, and if you're building solutions that have that have a need for Kanban and scheduler and bulk actions and just uh, the typical things and the atypical things that you would expect from project management systems, this is a good API to get started with. And again, you can mix and match these APIs and endpoints, right? You start with one, you find that you could use an endpoint and another API, you can very easily integrate it. Uh, all our APIs in our ecosystem. It actually takes no more than like 10 minutes to get started with any of these APIs. The EdTech, the, the Classroom API, we talked about it. Um, we got, we have, uh, you know, sample code and SDKs that you can take a look at as well. 
Um, if you're building any solution for the ed tech industry, this is actually uh, the first API I would recommend in our ecosystem. The conversation API, we support conversations on our, on our own products using our API, much like we use our other APIs to fire up our uh, applications that have been in production for years, our web apps, mobile apps on the App Store and Play Store, and our APIs on, on AWS Marketplace and other API hubs. All of these uh, rely very heavily on our APIs, so they've been put to test and been used by thousands of users at this point of time. Status API, again, if you're building statuses, you know, it's just, it's a lot more than just knowing who did what, right? You need to know which team is performing uh, better than the other, better than other teams, who, which, who in your team is, is the best performer, so you can, you know, award them with bonuses and whatnot, uh, who needs help, who's blocked, today or uh, who has been blocked generally most of the time so they can get that additional help. All of those kinds of things get answered by these uh, by the uh, status API. Um, that's it for this uh, video. I'll have more that talks about uh, other parts of this ecosystem and the value add we bring to the table. Thank you and go to aws.snowpal.com to check out our APIs on the AWS Marketplace. Hey there, um, let's continue from where we left off in the previous video. We looked at the Snowpal APIs. We took a high level look at uh, the specifics of each of these APIs. Um, so let me skip through these slides. And we'll start from here. Um, the idea is you need to get to your destination faster, right? So the less you have to do, uh, the faster you can get there. I'm stating the obvious, but uh, I'm just trying to make a point where you can focus, your idea should be to focus on solving your co-customer problems and you can leave the rest of the work to us. So you don't have to like hire a backend team, staff, uh, interview, uh, you know, have the skill sets to do what you need to do and the whole nine yards essentially, right? From architecting it, uh, designing it, implementing it, maintaining it and so on and so forth. Uh, leave that to us because, you know, that's uh, what we do for a living and we know how to do this work and we've done this for a while. Our products in production, like I mentioned previously, use a lot of our APIs and they've been stable, scalable, performant and extensible, which is why we have a ton of features that we have out there. So uh, what we look at in the next few slides is how you can actually get going, right? Okay, if you have an API, you've chosen to integrate, that's great. Uh, what, are the, what are some of the initial steps you take from a documentation standpoint and understanding our product terminologies and whatnot, right? Now developers look for a certain kind of documentation while product owners and product managers look for the same documentation from a content standpoint, but they like to have it presented uh, ever so slightly differently, right? And we'll see how we have documentation that caters to a variety of stakeholders. Um, for starters, you can go to developers.snowpile.com to check out our API guide our api references and recipes now recipes uh, we keep improving and publishing more recipes uh, so you know how to leverage the apis and the endpoints associated with those apis right so those are simple examples some of them could come across as manufactured because you know we don't really know your business not until you reach reach out to us so we come up with hypothetical examples uh, and give you uh, you know pointers to how you could go about Integrate, integrating our APIs. Now for real life examples of what's in production, there's plenty of uh, examples out there, uh, starting with our own product offerings on snowpal.com, ios.snowpal.com and android.snowpal.com and, and the list goes on. So check out our API guides and references and recipes. We also have Postman workspaces for all our APIs. So it's very easy for your dev team to get started. Um, I'll add the, the URLs here. Uh, or you can you know you can scan the QR code and it'll take you right there. So you can go check out all the Postman workspaces as well. So we have a fair bit of documentation, but every time you're going to go back to the documentation and see, you'll notice that there is always some improvement uh, constantly. So as I mentioned earlier, developers.snowpad.com is is kind of your starting point to reviewing our documentation. Uh, you can uh, you know your product managers, product owners. Uh, CTOs, architects, it's it's meant for everybody, uh, but typically uh, that's a good start, a good enough starting point for your product team because, you know, we've seen that developers prefer to see the same documentation 
slightly differently, maybe perhaps on Postman workspaces, but obviously they're also welcome to take a look at it on the same uh, page uh, because they can go to API reference and go through all the endpoints and, and whatnot. There's, there's more of this. The previous slide showed you the guide. This one shows you the API references. So again, just go to that page and you can uh, take a, a deeper look at all of the documentation. Postman, um, you can go to building-blogs-api.snowpal.com or conversation-api.snowpal.com. Essentially, the name of the API dash hyphenated api.snowpal.com is typically the naming convention we have for our uh, DNS. Uh, the, the, so you can go to any of those pages and again, scan the QR code if you don't want to remember uh, any of these links, right? And you can import all of the Postman workspaces from there. So to check out our products on AWS Marketplace, you would go to aws.snowpal.com. It'll take you to AWS Marketplace where you have a list of all of our API products and our professional services products, right? So you can subscribe to our products on AWS. It's very, very straightforward. We also have our APIs published on multiple API hubs. One other hub we um, constantly uh, uh, try to be on top of is Blobber, B-L-O-B-R, blobber.snowball.com. So AWS Marketplace and Blobber are quote unquote two of our primary API hubs, if you will, but we also publish APIs on other hubs like Rapid API, Open API Hub and so on and so forth. The steps, uh, it's quite straightforward. If you are an AWS, if you are an AWS customer, uh, just go to aws.snowpal.com, select the API that you want to subscribe to, um, follow the links. It takes it's two or three clicks essentially on on the AWS Marketplace. Uh, at one point, it'll redirect you to our page that asks you to enter a couple of basic information about you. Uh, it'll take less than two minutes, and once you do that you will get an email with the API key and product code. Uh, and that's basically it. At that point, you can import the Postman workspace and start integrating. And all of this is gonna take 10 minutes tops. And if you, going back to the slide for a second, if you subscribe to our, when you subscribe to our APIs on say the other API hub, which is blobber.snowpal.com, uh, the API key would be presented to you right there. So you wouldn't have to wait for an email, which anyways takes no time, but I'm just saying for what it's worth that on the other hubs, you'll get the API key directly and you can start consuming the APIs. We, we've also published SDKs. Uh, currently it's in Golang. Um, so you can, if you're a Go user, you can consume our APIs either directly as RESTful APIs or you can use the SDK because it's gonna make your life even easier. Um, currently all of our SDKs, we have SDKs for all, each of our APIs that's in production. Uh, all of those uh, SDKs are currently in Golang, but we're gonna be adding more languages into this mix in the near future. Professional services. Now again, our APIs are documented well. Uh, they have a lot of examples, so they are generally self-sufficient, but we've seen that people also sometimes find value in actually uh, hiring us to implementing those APIs. So you can uh, check out our products on, again, the professional services product on aws.snopal.com. You can purchase it there so we can help you integrate our APIs into your systems, uh, or you can reach out to us as well. So we can create, uh, we can get on a call and discuss the specifics of what it is that you need and how we can actually help you. To take a look at some of the existing customers, existing applications that are leveraging our APIs, um, just so you know, it's, thoroughly vetted and in production for several years. You can check out snowpal.com, ios.snowpal.com or android.snowpal.com. Those are just some of the, the existing applications that use these APIs. So backend as a service is, is what we do. Uh, we are your partners and we're here to help you get started, go to market really quickly. Uh, that way you get to market much sooner than your competitors. Um, so without, you know, don't delay any further. Just give us a call, send an email to varun at snowpal.xyz or book some time on our calendars by going to calendly.snowpal.com and let us know how we can help you. Definitely remember to check out aws.snowpal.com and blobber.snowpal.com uh, and you know, all the QR codes in this presentation should provide uh, you with all the necessary links that you need. Thank you. Hey there. 
Hope you're doing well. My name is Krish and I run the engineering team at Snowpal. In this presentation, we're going to take a quick look at some of our products and features. Now, we have a lot to offer, so we're just going to skim the surface in this presentation. So we certainly expect that you're going to have some questions. So do not hesitate to reach out to us by sending an email to varun at snowpal.xyz or feel free to set up an appointment by going to calendly.snowpal.com. Without further ado, let's get going. At Snowpal, we offer a number of APIs spanning thousands of endpoints. So no matter what problem you're solving and know which industry you are in, it's highly likely that our APIs can help you hit the ground running really quickly. Um, we're going to go through our APIs, take a look at them. Uh, the idea here is for us to serve as a backend, uh, as a service for you, uh, industry in an industry agnostic manner. Our own products use our APIs. So they have been in production for several years, uh, been thoroughly vetted. Um, so we can reassure you that uh, our APIs are going to help you uh, build stable systems that are performant uh, and scalable and extensible in production. So certainly check out all of the APIs and start with one and then you can add more into the mix because our APIs can be used independently of each other or collectively as a coherent group of uh, APIs that solve uh, a wide variety of problems. Let's take a look at our product suite. So in, uh, we uh, own both uh, B2B and B2C products. Let's start with the B2C products, right? So if you go to ios.snowpal.com or android.snowpal.com, you can check out our uh, mobile apps, uh, which can be used and which is what thousands of customers are using it currently for their personal and professional project management needs. Now they have a lot of features. Uh, it goes a lot well beyond project management. But you know, just to have you uh, give you a basic understanding, that's that's a decent way to look at the app because originally it was built exclusively to solve project management problems. Now it does a whole lot more, and it's going to continue to grow. So it actually will have a lot of different uh, solutions in, incorporated into a single app, done beautifully. So uh, we also have a web app. You can go to snowpal.com to check out our web application. So if you're uh, not on the go, you're sitting, sitting in front of your machine, then you can certainly leverage uh, the benefits of larger real estate with big devices these days, uh, big displays, and use our uh, web application. We uh, recently launched our education business, so you can go to learn.snowpal.com to check out our courses. You know, as we build these solutions, we learn a lot about software, and our knowledge constantly increases, and we we thought it would be good to share that with the community. So our courses can be purchased for very nominal prices, literally. I mean, I mean, they cost less than the price of coffee or a drink at a lot of the uh, at a lot of the coffee shops, or all of them, I should say, right? Probably. Um, so you can either uh, purchase them on learn.snowpal.com, or you can watch them uh, and improve your skills at the comfort of your devices while you're on the go. So you're waiting for a plane at the airport. You've checked in. You looked at the gates and everything. You have 30 minutes. Uh, you can either uh, you know, spend the time uh, watching our courses and improving your skills or you know, watching a movie, right? There's no harm, but I think it's always good to improve your skills. So by the time you land, you become a slightly better engineer or a product manager or UX designer than you already are at the beginning of that. Um, we have our APIs for uh, our business customers. So you can go to aws.snowpal.com uh, to see, uh, check out our products on the AWS Marketplace. We have, again, several APIs and also professional services products. So if you need, if you could use a little bit of help from us uh, uh, in integrating our APIs, then we are more than happy to do so, right? You, I'm quite certain that you will be self-sufficient because our APIs are pretty well documented, but it doesn't hurt to actually get that additional bit of help. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, that's about it for this presentation. Thank you. Hey there. We're going to continue learning about Snowpal's products and features. So if you haven't seen the previous video, definitely take a look at that. We went through all of these slides in the previous presentation, so I'm going to skip them. So let's start with uh, learning a little bit more about our APIs. Now we have uh, six APIs in production at this point, and that list is constantly growing. So let's take a look at each of them at a high level, right? The first API is our Building Blocks API. It has over 350 endpoints and it can be used and it is being currently used by uh, several customers as a foundational API to build any solution. It is an industry agnostic API. So if you are building a solution 
uh, for a pharmaceutical industry or, or a marketing industry or uh, a hotel or a hotel and restaurant industry, or it doesn't matter what it is, right? I'm just throwing out random examples. Uh, and if you're building web apps, mobile apps, or server side solutions, it honestly does not matter. All that you have to do is get acclimated with our terminologies. It just takes a, a couple of hours, if that. Uh, and once you do that, you can map the terminologies between your problems and our solution, and then get going from there. By using that, you're going to save a ton of time and reduce your market significantly, and you can get your products to market a lot sooner than your competitors, right? Uh, so that's the first API. The next one is a content management API. So if you're building a content management solution, or a solution that actually has content management needs in terms of managing content in a hierarchy. Uh, we support multiple levels of hierarchy. If you want to link content, like add symbolic links, uh, manage access by granting granular access control, uh, adding favorites, uh, you know, getting notifications, and you know, a lot of features, right? I don't want to go through that list here because there's a lot of it. Uh, you can definitely look at the content management API for those needs. And again, you start with one, and then you add the rest of the APIs to make it a more robust uh, integration. Uh, but the way our APIs are built is you can either use them independently or collectively, right? They, they are just as easy to use uh, them in, in, in both uh, these design patterns and mechanisms. Uh, the third one is a project management API. Again, for, you can use that for project management needs. We use our APIs so they are thoroughly vetted. They're scalable, performant, and stable, and extensible, and they've been in production for years. Our tools use our project management API much like they use the rest of our APIs. So if you want Kanban, scheduling, uh, inherited access control, bulk actions, uh, and everything, you know, the uh, typical features from a project management platform and atypical features as well, that's a place for you to start. The Classroom API is the fourth one. It's meant ex primarily for the ed tech industry. So if you're building solutions for teachers and professors and at universities and schools and whatnot, uh, you can you want to start with that particular API. Uh, it actually has a lot of related features. You can collaborate with other teachers, uh, add students into the mix, uh, obviously, because you're going to manage classrooms. Uh, you can create custom grading scales, publish assessments, assign grades, publish grades, look at student performances uh, in endpoints that return rich responses that you can use to building charts, much like we've done on our platforms. Um, so a lot of it related to the ed tech industry right? and you can compare student performances or a single student performance during the course of a semester. It's got all of these powerful and cool endpoints that you can leverage to improve your business. The next one is a status reporting API. Status reporting goes a whole lot beyond just knowing who did what, right? That's, that's the starting point, but you want to know which teams are, is, which team is performing better than another team, other teams. Who in a given team is actually the best performer? So you can reward them uh, when it comes to bonus time. Uh, who needs a bit of help? Who is blocked? Which of the teams is constantly blocked so you can kind of uh, give them more attention? You get answers to all of these really cool questions by using a status API. The last one, currently, and again, this list is constantly evolving and growing, is our conversation API, which helps you, uh, you know, integrate uh, in-app conversations and those features into your existing solutions, right? So if you want to add private conversations and group conversations, add support for read receipts, deleting, archiving, and leaving conversations, you know, typically being able to support conversations as an in-app feature, that is the API that you want to start with. Uh, the rest of our APIs have hundreds of endpoints. This one is the simplest of the APIs. So it, it will take you literally no time to obviously not onboarding because it's easy to onboard onto any of these APIs. Even integrating this API is going to be a really, really quick solution. Solution. So certainly for your conversational needs, you want to check that one out. Uh, that's about it for this presentation. Thank you. Hey there. Hope you're doing well. My name is Krish, and I run the engineering team at Snowpal. Uh, we've uh, taken a look at some of our products and features in the previous video. So if you haven't checked them out, certainly do so. So in this presentation, I'm going to pick up from where I left off in the previous one. So let's go through these slides because we've actually discussed these items. We talked about our features, our other products and APIs. We're going to focus this presentation on terminologies, right? So because once you know the roads, driving becomes a whole lot easier. Um, so here's some of our terminologies. And again, if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Go to uh, calendly.snowpal.com to book time with us or send an email to warren at snowpal.xyz. So, uh, Without further ado, let's get going with the terminologies. Uh, we uh, have a lot of features. I'm just going to uh, literally skim the surface here. 
resources, right? So you'll see uh, words like keys, blocks, pods, and block pods, right, as terminologies. That's the first thing you want to get acquainted with, right? A key is a container, right? So think of it as a project, a board, or a view. It's just an entry point to your problem. So that's a key, right? It's a container. Now, blocks live within keys and serve as the foundational, quote unquote, building blocks to break your problem down, right? So once you have a container, you want to break that problem down into, into as, uh, you know, to granular items, right? So those are uh, served, you know, blocks serve that particular purpose. Now, pods are very similar to blocks, but there, is, there are some differences, right? Pods can be a ch children to keys, in which case they become siblings to blocks. Uh, and they are similar in that sense, but they're different because blocks are like folders, meaning you have you can have something underneath them, and pods are like files or leaves, mean, meaning that is the lowest level. That is literally the single most important difference between those two items. We also have block pods because we've not we've uh, realized that customers need a third level of hierarchy, which is under blocks. So you can have keys, blocks, and then pod, pods underneath blocks, which are called block pods, right? So pods can be either siblings to blocks, therefore children to keys, or they can they can be like block pods, which are children to blocks, therefore grandchildren to keys. Now, this is very simple. It just, you know, takes a minute to explain it, right? So if it's unclear, just play this, play the last 30 seconds again, and it's going to uh, answer all your questions. Some other verbiage that we have, tasks. You can create tasks for other people. That's again standard English terminology. There's nothing more to explain there. Relations are ways to connect disparate resources, right? Now we have lots of keys, pods, block pods, and blocks. As your content grows, uh, now you want to relate them. So look at them as like scope bookmarks. So you go to one of the blocks and you're like, hey, I have a relationship between this and some other disparate piece of content there. In which case, you can establish the connection by creating a relation. Uh, when you relate A to B, B is related to A, so it's bi-directional. Uh, checklists, you can add checklists and uh, any number of checklists and checklist items to manage work being done, uh, you know, assign them to other people and whatnot, right? So it's, it's standard checklist functionality. Favorites, I don't know if I have to explain that at all. It's adding and, and book, you know, adding and removing favorites so you know which ones you, you are favoriting and whatnot. Uh, symbolic links, if you come from a Linux or a Unix world, you will understand that. Um, essentially, you can create content one time and link it any number of times. Because, you know, let's say you, we also support copy and move functionality, obviously. But if you don't want to replicate or duplicate your content and you actually want to have a single piece of content that's referenced uh, through uh, multiple containers and blocks, uh, etc., because you want to lay them out nicely, links will actually help you do that. System keys are actually uh, is a very cool feature. Uh, when you're collaborating with other people and they're sharing content with you, you want you, you can actually structure it however you want to structure it. But as a starting point, they are all available under system keys. So you can go uh, look at the filters created by me, shared by me, shared with others, and then that will give you a good filtering of our content, right? So you should go to system keys to check out those features. So that's some of the terminology that we have here. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at some of our features, but this is a good point to end this video. Thank you. Hey there, uh, my name is Krishna. I run the engineering team at Snowpal. Uh, in this video, we're gonna continue uh, with where, from where we left off in the previous video. So if you haven't taken a look, taken a look at them, certainly do so. Um, so without further ado, let me get to the slide uh, where we were at in the last video. We talked about our B2B, B2C products. We talked about our APIs, our endpoints. We talked about our terminologies. Um, and then we talked about yep, verbiage and we were here. So in this one, let's take a look at some of our features. Again, we have a lot of features. We're just going to skim the surface uh, in this presentation, much like we did in the previous ones. Um, uh, here are some of our features. The, the idea here is we give you everything you need for the most part. Uh, so you can actually hit the ground running really quickly and only build something that's very specific to your business, right? All the foundational building blocks, we want to hand it out to you by being your backend as a service. Uh, some of the features, we have multiple key types. The key is a container, as we've seen in the previous presentations. Uh, we have four different key types at this point, and that those key types are constantly increasing. We have a custom key type, a project type, a teacher type, a student type. So depending on the type of business you're in, 
you want to pick one or the other key types right now again you'll need more than one key type for the same business but again uh, but all that i'm trying to say here is there might be a, a, a better starting point when you're going to adding these keys and which key types you want to start with uh, to get your feet wet a customized content structure now again how you want to structure your content is entirely customizable right so we provide a lot of the uh, endpoints for you so you can uh, whatever your business looks like whatever your problems whatever the problems you're solving whether you're building web apps mobile apps or server side solutions you can leverage the the flexibility of a content structure and expose it the way you deem appropriate for to your end users a uh, granular access control depending on the key types we have variations in our access control which is one of our usps if you will uh, you can have granular access control at at the uh, lowest level of the hierarchy like a block pod or you can have inherited access control in the case of you know project keys and classroom key uh, key types for instance right that's your choice uh, we have user and system notifications when uh, user a shares content with user b uh, there will be no user b would be notified depending on the, on their preferences uh, those are user notifications and there are, also, there are also system notifications that we support for reminders when something is due, it's coming up, uh, your due dates are coming up for a certain item and whatnot. Linking gives you the flexibility to link disparate pieces of content. You don't want to duplicate your content, but you want to create a new hierarchy which uses existing content. Linking is a very powerful feature that lets you do that. Charts, we have great endpoints. We have lovely charts on our own products. You can take a look at them by going to ios.snowball.com or android.snowball.com for the mobile apps or to snowball.com for the web app. And you can build charts just as rich, if not richer, uh, using our endpoints because we obviously use our own endpoints and APIs. Relations is a way to connect disparate pieces of content. So think of them as scope bookmarks. If you want to relate a block to a pod or a pod to a key because you want to be able to quickly access one from the other, then you can use relations. Favorites. There's not much to explain. You can favorite or unfavorite your resources. System keys are another powerful feature. Uh, you can actually, you know, check out, go. Uh, uh, system keys give you a way to filtering content by content that you've created, content that is being shared with you, content that you share with other people. Uh, and it's at the key type level. So we have system keys for each of the key types we support. So even if you did not create a custom structure, you will have access to all the content you've created and you've been uh, shared uh, uh, content that's been shared with you by using our system keys. Um, there's a lot more, so I'm going to skim through it really quickly. We support attachments. Uh, you can add files, you know, checklists uh, to managing your items. Dashboards got a rich set of features. Comments, uh, notes and comments are very good. Only difference between them is notes are private to you. Comments are available to other collaborators that you've shared your content with. Profile, modifying and customizing your profile, social media integrations, Facebook, Google, uh, Apple, uh, and uh, Azure for sign-in. And then we also support tasks as, as a feature, right? Um, and there's more here, as you can see, right? Students managing grades, assignments. Uh, you can use them for uh, specific industries, uh, for project management, for content management, small businesses, colleges, ed tech, events, fintech. And, uh, you know, the list uh, goes on, right? The API just covered the gamut. Um, so that's, I know I'm rushing through here because there's a lot to cover. Uh, it's very simple to onboard, choose the API hub, uh, go to AWS Marketplace, get the API key. Uh, your email will have the API key and the product code. You can import the Postman workspace and your dev team can hit the ground running literally within the first 10 minutes of being aware of uh, the existence of APIs. It's as simple as that. Uh, our documentation is plentiful. So take a look at it, go to developers.snowball.com. Uh, we have guides, API references, recipes, Postman workspaces. It's meant for all stakeholders, product managers, product owners, and developers, right? So definitely do take a look at our product documentation, which is plentiful. The idea is you need to reduce your time to market and we're gonna help you do that, right? We're gonna do all we can to help you reduce your time to market so you can release your products before your competitors do. So don't worry about hiring, staffing, maintaining and managing, managing server-side teams. Use this to solve all of your server-side problems and use this as your backend as a service. That's essentially it. So thank you.